in the first half and uh, goodness gracious Paul McLean even though there was only a couple of thousand Welshmen here the sound and the impact that they had was as good as 50,000 I guess at Cardiff Brendan I don't think it matter where these two teams played uh, the, re the, uh, the intensity of the rivalry is, uh, is certainly going to be there Jonathan Webb starts this all-important fourth quarter final here in the sunshine of the Sunshine State and immediately we come back to the 22 for a dropout and this of course the first time these two teams have met since that brutal encounter on March the 7th at Cardiff which in the long history of these two teams will rank as one of the most notorious matches which produced the unprecedented action of four English players being banned by their rugby union after the match was finished for the unsavory incidents which took place in that particular fixture but we've been assured by the management of both teams that there'll be no score settling here this afternoon and anyway the majority of the players that took part in that match are not playing today the English with good ball early on in the match Peter Williams putting it underneath the Welsh posts and it's a real raffle under the goal post it's gone loose and the English very close to scoring a try there the ball was loose We'll have a look at that one again because the ball was there for that English, those English forwards but they just couldn't get their hands on it. Superb up and under from the boot of Peter Williams and it hung in the air coming down right underneath the goalpost. A very awkward one for the Welsh defence. And the ball went loose from John Devro, but the English forwards just couldn't get their hands on the ball. No try. Good start by England. It was very good ball from that line out. Alan Phillips finding his Cardiff teammate Bob Norster in the middle of the night out line out Jonathan Davis challenged by Gary Rees and the Welsh forwards offside and a defensive penalty to England and the line outs will probably be one area of this exchange or this encounter where the Welsh may have the advantage over the English side the English scrum looks to be a little too strong and a little too powerful for the Welsh but in Bob Norster they have the best line-out forward in Europe and as we saw in that line-out there it was a superb two-handed take from Norster and he also has the advantage of his clubmate Alan Phillips from Cardiff so Phillips and Norster have played a lot of rugby together they know each other's game so well and it really is a bonus to be have to be able to have two players the hooker and your line-out jumper in a test match who've played so much rugby at club level this time it's Moriarty that takes it down at the back of the line out for Wales it's there for Jones Davis plenty of time but he hasn't found touch but there was obviously a, an infringement that the uh, Welshman that the Frenchman had spotted and he has penalized the English and so Davies Davis will kick for touch from just outside his 22 because if it may have been something that happened off the ball because it wasn't a line-out infringement, obviously, because it was taken from about seven metres in from touch. Martin Green, coach of the English side. Brian Moore. Wade Jordy, the tallest man in the English line-out today at six feet eight, but he couldn't get his hands around that ball and knocked it forward at the same time. where the English pack will be hoping to stamp their authority and a free kick against the Welsh halfback I think for his delay in putting the ball in and so England receive a defensive free kick just inside their own half Way, 22 and halfway inside the Welsh half and again it's good ball for Wales in the lineup this time coming from Gareth Roberts and 
some fairly vigorous rucking in there. Mr. OK, happy to let play continue. Now the chance here for the English backs. This is Underwood who's coming from the right wing. Webb is up from fullback. He's got Harrison there with him as well. But drifts away. To see the English backs willing to run the ball, Paul. I think that's where they, uh, they've got a substantial advantage at this particular time. That was good ball. Davis under pressure again inside his own half. And he finds his touch this time. 24-year-old Jonathan Davis, obviously a key man in this match today. Such a frail little fellow. Looks as if he should be wrapped in cotton wool. He's so small, just 11 and a half stone of him. No score in the match, which has been in progress for just a seven minutes. And this is the first time that play has really got down deep inside the English half. A few metres outside the English 22, Brian Moore looking for Wade Durley in the middle of the line-out. Those Welsh forwards have been penalised, and so another penalty. So, Mr Orke, very quick on his whistle this afternoon. And Williams again to kick for touch. I think the uh, French referee is uh, is treating this uh, these initial minutes of this game, Brendan, very uh, carefully, uh, fully aware of what happened the last time these two teams met. Of course, it was in the first 10 minutes of that match in Cardiff back in March that the violence really exploded. Noses were broken, jaws were broken, players were leaving the field, and it seemed to settle down a bit after that. So, as Paul said, Mr Orkay keen to make sure we don't have a repetition of something as unedifying as that in this match. And it's been fought out anyway in the first 10 minutes in a very good spirit so far. Scrum to go down just inside the Welsh half. And there's a strike against the head for Brian Moore. And Dean Richards, who losing it, loses his footing in the soft part of the ground. He had his ankles tapped as well. And Mr Orke very quick to pounce on Tony Buchanan after he went after one of those English forwards and has been penalised for that. And I think the reason why he did is because of something that happened to Collins, who's lying on the ground. Here we see Richards footing as he goes over in the soft part of the ground that's big Dean Richards all 17 stone of him driving himself into the mud and now there was an incident that took place here which prompted Buchanan to go after one of those English forwards there he is you see him in the blue there with the blue headband who went after Gary Pierce and was penalized and in that fracas Collins Richie Collins the Welsh loose forward suffered a blow and doesn't look to be in particularly good health at the moment you got a knee to the uh, to the midriff there Brendan and uh, the Welsh were penalized from the ensuing uh, ensuing ruck because of uh, some retaliatory uh, work there's virtually no uh, no substantial in currently So a little groggy, but can, happy to continue. Collins tires. It's for Jonathan Webb, who will have his first shot at goal. It's a very long kick for Webb, within the range of 45 to 50 metres. Just a short run-up. Struck it well, but it's going to be a little short. Thorburn watches it, and as he's approached by Underwood, he ensures that we'll restart from the 22. So Jonathan Webb, who's done a pretty good job for the English team, coming in to replace Marcus Rose, who was injured in that first match against Australia. Scored 40 points in the two and a half games that he's played in for England, and also has added a bit of dash to its back line. Charged down, but it's taken fortuitously by Devro. 
Yeah, and Evans having a little run down the right wing. Good play here from the Welsh. It all stemmed, of course, from the charge down. It's backfired on the Englishman. Very nice piece of work there by Yayan Evans. He stepped around Unwood very easily. So the line out midway 22 and halfway. Nigel Redman has it for England, but the ball wasn't straight. The throw in wasn't straight, and so the scrum to take place 15 metres in from touch. So let's see what the Welsh backs can do with this ball if they win it. For the first time, they've had ball from a set piece really inside the English half. Jones who working the blind side pushing the ball into the towards the corner flag Richards is there and his opposite number Paul Moriarty was rather lucky not to be penalized there for charging into Richards after the ball had gone into touch gone into touch on the full anyway so we come back for the line out if the Welsh uh, to be a chance in this game they're going to have to use good ball like that a bit better than what they did just then Tap from Dooley, untidy ball. And Harding couldn't get his hands on that one. It was knocked forward anyway. Matches between these two countries in recent years haven't been renowned for the vast number of tries that they have produced. 31 points that were scored in the match in Cardiff this year. All but four of them came from penalties. Just one try in the match. And Davis. Testing Jonathan Webb, looking into the sun. It's a very good high up and under. He took it well. Bowen arrived here at the same time. But Webb didn't flinch. He's a little groggy, but he claimed the fair catch. Certainly, I don't think the English have lost anything at all in the early retirement of Marcus Rose from this tournament because Webb has done an admirable job for England wearing the number 15 jersey, but he's in a little bit of trouble at the moment. And so we have another stoppage for injury. Well, Paul, a fairly quiet start to the match in contrast to the fiery explosion which took place in Cardiff, in Cardiff a few months ago. There's no doubt that the uh, Welsh uh, feel that Webb could be the weakness. Uh, Jonathan Davies is standing on the short side of each of those scrums and uh, in a position just to hoist the Gary on each time. So he wants to get his forwards rolling forward, I would think. So Phillips again. Bob Norster in the middle of the line out, ready to pounce. There goes Norster, but the throw wasn't good enough this time. It went over his head and it came back on the England side. Jamie Salmon playing in the centres, of course, for England this afternoon. Good ball again for the English backs. Sims to Webb. Charged down by Adrian Hadley, but it rolled into touch. Those Welsh backs up very quickly on their English opponents. Yes, the English uh, trying to work their moves behind the uh, advantage line there. And uh, the Welsh are up just too quickly for them. Richard Moriarty to Buchanan who lost it forward the fumble from Tony Buchanan big prop forward wearing number one for Wales their loose head prop and so we'll have the scrum just outside the English 22 that's the English quarter line that you can see at the top of your picture and so the tight head counters one apiece as Jonathan Davies drops for goal but it's out wide Davies, who's quickly established himself. Davis, should I say, has quickly established himself as an expert with these drop goals. Eight so far in the short, brief test career, which spans just 13 matches. So, very high strike rate for drop goals. And the Welsh have it. Jones to Davis. And again he elects to kick, and again he's testing Webb. Webb wasn't quite so keen to get under it this time. 
And the Welsh forwards have it, only a matter of metres from the English line. And the English don't look too good when they're going back, do they? That was very loose play from the English forwards there as the Welsh just poured through the gaps. And that was a very good kick from Jonathan Davis. And the understandable sombre look on the face of Martin Green because he wouldn't have been very pleased with his team's performance in that little skirmish. Get the ball away from Brendan, uh, from uh, from Webb, uh, Brendan. Uh, England looked very, very, uh, very, very weak, and uh, their forwards went back there very quickly at all. Uh, the Welsh keeping the pressure on, and uh, they're in the mass score area now. Well, no one seemed keen to get under that high kick from Davis. Uh, Underwood, if we have a look at it again, we'll see Underwood and Webb rather unsure of who should go underneath it in fact we're not going to see the up and under because it has come down and it was from that play that the Welsh forwards just poured through those gaps there in the English defence that was virtually non-existent and eventually the infringement took place just a couple of metres from the line we didn't see anyone get off the ground to, to jump for that ball at that particular time and I think it's very important in that vital area of the field so an opportunity here for Wales, but it's the English put in. The ball knocked forward by those Welsh forwards when they were scrambling towards the English line. Controlled by Richards at the back. To Williams and just gets away from the flying dive of Robert Jones. So the pressure eased a little off those English shoulders. Neither scrum looks uh, settled at the moment. We've had a, a tight head either side, and I think that'd have to be a worry. For, uh, for both teams their instability at the scrum is uh, would be a concern Wells with the short line out the Moriarty brothers and Collins and the penalty against those Welsh forwards results in another opportunity for England to relieve the pressure some confusion there as to just exactly where the penalty has gone well it was against the Welshman for I thought it was a, a, against the Welshman initially for an infringement in the line out but he, it, he certainly uh, awarded the penalty to Wales and then uh, uh, Moriarty uh, Richard Moriarty did question the referee and uh, the decision was reversed most unusual <laughs> but of course Mr. Okay, by virtue of the fact that he is French and probably doesn't speak much English if any English at all and it's understandable, I, I guess, that uh, there will be these communication problems. But, but, however, from it all, the Welsh fullback Paul Thurboyne has his first attempt at putting points on the board. Thorburn from 27 metres. And that's a poor kick from Thorburn. In these conditions, he really wouldn't expect to miss too many from that handy range that miss could be uh, vital come the end of the game Webb restarts after 15 minutes of fairly unimpressive rugby between these two great foes Dean Richards who's had a made a quiet start to the game in contrast to the very good start he had in both the pr previous matches that he's played in and again, there's indifference in that English midfield as Sims loses the ball. The referee playing advantage to Wales and now steamrolling the English back towards their 22. But we're going to come back for that uh, early infringement from Sims when he lost the ball forward. No real advantage there to the Welsh in the opinion of the French referee and so the scrum to take place midway 22 and halfway a lot of hesitation in the English backs there they had very good ball they had an overlap uh, on the outside and uh, they were just too slow through the hands well they certainly don't look the side that played so well against the Australians a couple of weeks no. ago but it's still early days yet of course Jones and he knew as soon as he kicked it he pushed it too far That wind is starting to fresh up now, Brennan. We've had unsettled weather here for a couple of days, and uh, I would think we were going to get some rain in the next 15 minutes. Yes, the black clouds are starting to gather around Ballymore. You can see them there in the distance. 
and Paul McLean should know that they will probably be bringing rain. The Welsh penalised again in that line-out. And Williams once more from just outside his 22. Neither team has been able to put uh, two or three phases together as yet, which is, uh, as we said at the outset, Brendan, uh, neither of these teams, the way they've started, uh, are going to make an impression on the on the three other teams in the semis. Yes, so I imagine if you were an All Black watching this match at the moment, you wouldn't be greatly concerned at uh, what this match has produced so far, because it's had nothing to inspire anyone from so far from the first 20 minutes. In fact, probably the kicking of Jonathan Davis has been the one impressive feature of the match so far. Meanwhile, Gareth Roberts has suffered an injury, and so there will be another stoppage. Yes, of course, the winner of this match, if you don't already know, will meet the All Blacks here on this ground on Sunday in the second semi-final of the World Cup. 24 hours earlier at Sydney, the first semi-final will take place between France and Australia. And judging by the performance of these two teams, it looks as if this will be... Well, these two teams look as if they will pose much less of a problem for the All Blacks than perhaps the Scots did in the quarterfinals. I, I don't think uh, either team has formed on the board or over the last couple of years to, to worry the All Blacks. Um, especially in this the first World Cup the two, three teams already there Australia New Zealand and France uh, just seem to be playing a, a notch higher in uh, their capabilities than, than these two teams the mind boggles at what uh, thought what the All Blacks might do to either of these two teams if they can beat the Scots by 27 points who have looked more impressive than either of these two teams in pool play but however that might all be a little premature there is still 60 minutes of this match to go Roberts, who has left the field temporarily. I think he will resume his place in the Welsh pack as play restarts from outside the 22. The English backs again under pressure. Salmon taken in the tackle by Davis. Winterbottom there. Good play from the English loose forward. And a shabby pass from Richard Harding. And this really is pretty mediocre stuff. Jonathan Davis is injured in back play. Well, it was uh, Davis that made the tackle on Peter Winterbottom, and it was a pretty solid tackle he made on the English loose forward, who would be a couple of stone heavier than him at least, and he may, he may now be paying for it. It's a knee injury. We'll have a look at it again. It was English ball. Salmon, should I say, that it was tackled by... Uh, Jonathan Davis who went in there and he took him very well but obviously has injured himself in the process and the rain is starting to fall here at Ballymore when it's come about 14 minutes before you suspected Paul but it looks as like if it might be a nasty shower too people running in all directions around the ground the umbrellas are coming out and poor old Jonathan Davis while the rain thrashes down on him is being attended to by his masseur and this would be a major blow to the Welsh, of course, if Davis is unable to continue, but I think he will. He appears reasonably comfortable with it. No, I'm sure he's not going off. Well, of course, he is only allowed to interrupt play for one minute, and after that stage, if he still requires injury attention, he must leave the ground, and that was what Mr OK was saying to him, but he looks good enough to take his place, even if he is limping a fraction. So the rugby from the first 20 minutes of this quarter-final, about as miserable as the weather that is prevailing here at uh, Ballymore at the moment. And the Welsh still with only 14 players on the field. Collins, who has received additional in uh, attention on this side of the field, is 
waiting to rejoin. Meanwhile, Mike Harrison let down by his hands midway 22 and halfway. And now Mr. OK indicates that Collins may rejoin the match. That wind is now substantially stronger, Brendan. It's come up very quickly and uh, certainly favouring the Welsh at this point in time. Davis with another drop goal from 40 metres. And it still might be a useful kick for the Welsh. Webb under pressure a couple of metres from his line. And so that was a very good kick from Davis because it's taken play down right to the corner flag wasn't intentional but the Welsh have profited by it nonetheless yes he was being a bit optimistic I think he's just coming back for a, from a knee injury and trying to kick a 50 metre field goal well he possibly thought because he had this very strong wind at his back blowing in that very direction from corner flag to corner flag that it might have been worth the chance Collins back on the field takes the ball cleanly dropped however by Gareth Roberts 15 metres short of the English line Roberts again leading the charge for Wales Jones Davis and he's thinking about another drop goal but now he's going to have a little run Davis taken on by Devro Collins good stuff from the Welsh Buchanan but just at the end it was Gareth Roberts that lost it forward but it all started from just a few seconds of silky magic from Jonathan Davis much better play from Wales uh, it's the first time that Davis has uh, attempted to have a run the defense held off just slightly and what one jink inside made very good ground good support from the Welsh forwards as the rain continues to fall here at Ballymore and a crowd of about 15,000 and I think initially Davis thought about a drop goal then he saw the defence closing in on him, so he had a little run, and he ran himself out of trouble very well. In fact, nearly ran himself in for a try. And it was good support play here by the Welsh forwards. Devro, who was up from the centres, was the man that took the initial pass. Collins was there as well, only a couple of metres short of the line. It looked as if the Welsh must score here. Good handwork there from Buchanan as the ball appeared to be getting away from him. But then it was knocked forward, and also by Roberts as well. And so we'll have the scrum but that's the closest that anyone's come to scoring in this match so far and Paul Rendell the English loose head prop looks a pretty sorry sight at the moment must have got caught on the bottom of that uh, ruck which developed after Davis was tackled and he's leaving the field so England with a makeshift scrum at the moment in the worst possible position and that's the effect that Paul Rendell has had and it's a try So the first points of the match coming in the form of a try after 25 minutes of play and it was Gareth Roberts that got it and full marks to Wales. They struck as it were while the iron was hot with this uh, makeshift English scrum with Rendell off the paddock and the English scrum looks as if it was on roller skates as it went back over the line and the ball was free and diving on it was Gareth Roberts. Simple as that. Won't come much easier than that. Thorburn makes it 6-0 and you can't help but sympathise I suppose with the English for the fact that they were without their big strong prop forward Paul Rendell who was off the field getting medical attention for a cut and had the mortification of seeing his scrum steamrolled back and a try conceded. Gareth Chilcott, I think, is going to be replacing mm. uh, Well, that was a build-up of pressure from Wales. The try probably should have come from the, the phases of play just prior to that scrum, but uh, they took their chances. Good scrum. England under pressure. Well, this is very much against predictions. The English have started this match as favourites well maybe that try 
might put a bit of fire into their bellies and lift their performance because it's been lethargic and inert so far. That's a good kick from Williams and England for the first time for 20 minutes are down inside the Welsh 22. They really seem to have been playing only at about half pace, the English, for this match. And it's no surprise to see them behind on the scoreboard. Yes, there doesn't seem to be much spark in the English team. That's the first time they've come back into the game with a bit of fire. Moriarty being knocked out from that kickoff and uh, Williams hoisting a ball in front of the Welsh posts. And now that the Welsh have put their noses in front against their old arch enemies, they, I'm sure, will be hard to beat. Good work from Dooley in the lineup, but the referee wasn't happy with it. And the Welsh who seem quite comfortable with this underdog tag because they went into the match against Ireland at Athletic Park a couple of weeks ago. Again, very much as the underdogs and in a match which didn't climb to any great heights, but it was a very good performance from the Welsh. They beat the Irish 13 points to six and set them up for this World Cup. And in a similar sort of scrappy match today, they're doing much the same thing with the English, just not allowing them to settle down. And with this man, Davis, playing literally havoc with the English loose forwards, as he did then. England are in all sorts of trouble. And the misunderstandings continue in the back of the English defence. And those Welsh forwards very quick to get there. And laying on, good ball again for Davis. Bowen. Harding has him in the tackle. And there's only one team in this match at the moment, Paul McLean. That's for sure. Bad mistake there by England. Two bad mistakes, in fact, and Davis very quick to jump on it. Interesting to note from that uh, two scrums ago, Brennan, uh, the English pack um, defending with the Welsh ball put in. Uh, their back row, all three of them are jumping off the back of the scrum and uh, putting no pressure whatsoever on Davis. And the penalty against the uh, youngest man in the... Welsh pack there is 20 year old David Young the man that was drafted in from the tranquility of great rugby in Canberra into the vanguard of the World Cup this afternoon he's not a very big fellow he and he looks about 14 and a half stone halfway Jones having a little dab but into a wall of white jerseys inside the English half and it's coming back on the English side this is better stuff from the English forwards now let's see what Rory Underwood can do touches the ball for the first time and he knocked it forward well his hands may well have been cold from the fact that they haven't been employed in the first 28 minutes of this match Davis, poor pass, Thorburn is there from fullback, Adrian Hadley on the left wing, good support play from John Devro. Devro, now the chase is on, Underwood is flying back, I think he'll have a little too much pace for Devro, but he just gets there, and the English defences are at sixes and sevens at the moment, and it was only the fast legs of Rory Underwood who scooted back from the right wing that saved the day for England is John Devereux's little kick. Good support play by Devereux there. And, uh, he was in the clear. It's a race to the line. Peter Williams also had that ball covered, so... Uh... Webb, who is having the least most impressive game in this World Cup of the four that he's played in so far, 
and he nearly made another mistake there I'm sure he didn't design to land that ball right on the touchline fortunately for him it did not go out on the full that was also the first time that Wales have decided to run the ball they used two cut passes across their across the back line from uh, inside their 22 and it's produced results Collins, who's not very tall, but he's been a, an effective player both in the lineouts and in the loose this afternoon as he again controlled the ball for Wales. <laughs> 30 minutes of play have elapsed in the first half of this quarterfinal match here at Ballymore. And it's Wales against the predictions. They're ahead by six points to middle with a try to Gareth Roberts. Phillips, Richard Moriarty with the tap and tidy ball, which England profit from. Williams, Winterbottom. Reese carries it on up to halfway. Now there's room here. For Sims, Webb up from fullback. Underwood, the English captain. A suggestion there that the English backline was going to produce something in keeping with what we've seen from them in earlier matches, but it fell apart when it got to this man. So for the knock-on, we'll have the scrum. There didn't seem to be too much wrong with the pass, and Harrison did put it down. It's a better play by England, in fact. Um, using the ball very well there. Here we see it. Jamie Salmon that timed the pass nicely to Sims. Sims to Webb, who was up from fullback. And uh, there was a chance here for Harrison. Now he makes the most of these opportunities normally when he was at full speed and with some room there, but it just slipped through his hands. Maybe the ball's a little greasy as a result of the shower of rain that we've had. He is an international player. I think, uh, and they do play in wet conditions in England. I think he should have picked that one up. England, I've got to take those opportunities because... Uh, they might get too many more. Well, they're certainly not dominating the uh, scrums in the manner which we were led to believe they would with this very makeshift Welsh front row. In fact, England aren't dominating anything at all at the moment, at least of all the scoreboard, where they're behind by six points to nil. The English forwards penalised coming into that more than an offside position and so a defensive penalty here to Wales midway 22 and halfway and the big boot of Paul Thorburn and he has found touch after Harrison dropped the ball just outside his 22 so it's been a chapter of errors by this English team who at the moment are making a rather undignified exit from the World Cup. Down by six points to nil with half time just seven minutes away. A more good ball for Wales. Now Davies, he had plenty of time there if he wanted the drop goal, but he didn't. And it's a very poor kick. That's the poorest kick we've seen from Davis this afternoon. And Harrison decides to clear it himself. As we said earlier, Brennan, there's not too much continuity uh, being shown by either team. And there was an opportunity where Wales were inside the deep inside the English uh, half of the field. One good ball and uh, did very little with it. Again, it's Collins at the back of the line out. But a poor pass to Bowen. Not much he could do about that. Well, for all the criticism that is heaped on Jonathan Davis, I notice one of the criticisms that is often made of his play that he doesn't think enough about the players outside of him. And I think that was a very good example of it there where there was good ball laid on for the Welsh backs inside the English half and he decided to do something with it himself rather than give his backs a run. I think that good two-handed ball has just got to be used a lot better than what they've been doing with it. Control from Dean Richards at the back of the English scrum. Webb from the safety of his 22. But not much is going right for Jonathan Webb this afternoon as he hasn't found touch. But uh, there must have been a, an infringement there by Wales and the referee was playing the advantage and there wasn't any and so he's awarded England the penalty. But 
but I think it might have been Jones who was perhaps offside coming around a little too quickly from that scrum. I think it was offside at the scrum, yes. But... And Williams with his left boot. And this really is an abysmally poor performance from the English team. There are just so many unforced errors coming from their play that it's almost a case of two poor teams having an off day. As Paul McLean said before, the quality of rugby here is at least a notch or two below what we've seen from teams like France, New Zealand and the Australians yesterday. It's like there's two, almost two competitions going on here. Davis. Jonathan Webb gets his hands safely around it this time. And Webb having a little run. Collins, the Welsh loose forward, wraps him up on the English 10 metre line. difference Brennan from uh, what we're used to in the southern hemisphere is the support play is just not there and uh, because of that we just don't have the continuity that we we see when Australia plays New Zealand. Thorburn up from fullback but he can't get away from Kevin Sims and the ball goes into touch. Well, Paul, I imagine he couldn't help but have been impressed with the performance of the Wallabies yesterday. I thought they played very well, and uh, whereas they hadn't been seen to be playing too well in the previous games, I think yesterday where they knew the, uh, the opposition was going to be pretty stiff, um, and uh, they got off to a good start. Dean Richards with the ball for England, Harding over the top. Not a bad looking kick either, Thorburn, he hasn't got much time. A fairly aimless kick, plenty of room here for Webb, he's got Underwood outside of him, he perhaps should have hung on to it a bit longer. And the defence closed in pretty quickly on uh, Rory Underwood, but to Jonathan Webb, he seemed very keen to get rid of that ball pretty quickly. He took that knock early on in the match and it just literally seems to have knocked the stuffing out of him. Yes, he didn't give uh, Underwood much of a chance there. Dooley and Richards, who combined well, but the throw-in wasn't straight. Well, understandably, I suppose, the Australian press this morning in the newspapers, the rugby writers have been singing the praises of the team, which they crucified last week, and making much of a comment by the Irish coach McDoyle that the Australians will, quote, overwhelm the French in their semi-final match next week. Scrum going down on the Welsh 10 metre line. Another strike against the head for Brian Moore. That's two. Richards. Harding. Good play there by Gareth Shellcock. Williams, there's no way through that wall of red jerseys. Good support play there that time from Richards. This is better play from the English. Now what can their backs do? Salmon. With those Welsh backs up very quickly, did the right thing there and putting the ball across the field into touch. It would have been just hospital passes if the ball had gone any further along the English back line there. The Welsh backs were ready to strike. I think it's the first time England have put three phases of play together and they certainly look like they could have made a break, but the Welsh were equal to the task with their defence in the, in the backs. Two minutes of play remaining in the first half in England with possibly their last chance to do something about the six-point deficit, making one of their rare excursions into the Welsh 22. Still not happy with that scrum. He wants them to go down, of course, right over the mark. And a free kick to England here for an infringement by the Welsh scrum. They, of course, can't kick directly for goal. 
but chance here for Williams to have a drop goal and uh, from a very handy angle it didn't even threaten the crossbar he seemed to just rush it a little too much there he, he had a little more time if he wanted it but he just flung his boot at the ball very quickly it's the story in the first half for England the penalty against the Welsh I think it might have been there for some indiscriminate use of the boot by one of those Welsh forwards so another opportunity here for England in the dying minutes of the first half for Webb for what will be his second shot at goal missed very early on in the match from a wider range than this from about to 50 meters but this is probably around about 40 meters but he's got a very tricky crosswind to contend with here Paul McLean is pretty used to kicking in these conditions here at uh, Ballymore. Difficult kick ball. It shouldn't be too bad that side of the field because he should be kicking into the breeze. And, uh... He struck the first one very well, so didn't strike that one too well. It's another poor kick from Webb. Nowhere near the uprights, let alone the crossbar. And let's hope the referee blows his whistle for half time. Half now started Ballymore. Earl Curtin has joined me. Earl, in those immortal words from a few years ago, this match is less than memorable. Well, yes, I can't believe that the English back row are playing so poorly for a start, and they're all so disjointed. And the other thing is that I can't. It, the, the English backs don't seem to be even running onto the ball. I, I find it terribly, terribly difficult to see how on earth they can ever pull it out. It's just one of those bad, bad days. Paul Thorburn, Paul Thorburn about to restart for Wales. Let's go back to Brendan Telford. Welcome back to Ballymore for the start of the second half of this uh, quarter-final with Wales playing from right to left in this second half. The only points in the first 40 minutes of this match coming from a try by Gareth Roberts and the Welsh against predictions leading the English by six points to nil but really neither side can take much in the way of credit or kudos out of this first 40 minutes and at times I thought Paul McLean was almost going to drift off to sleep alongside of me and he certainly couldn't have been blamed if he had if it was that sort of match. In fact I'm sure if it was a club game here at uh, Brisbane it was played as poorly as this that most of the spectators would have gone home by half time. Yes it was certainly uh not uh, not one of those games that many people would uh, leave their living room to go and watch, Brendan, and especially the people in New Zealand. It's a better quality rugby at their local rugby club, I think. Harding. And that's just what happened in the first half, a continuation of the same poor standard of rugby. Endless chain of mistakes, a match which really slid into the mire of mediocrity quickly after the opening whistle and I'm afraid it's stayed there ever since. Collins again at the back of the line-out. Harding in trouble once more. Webb. Mike Harrison who must be a very frustrated English captain this afternoon having witnessed what has gone on inside of him. Webb. Not quite sure what he is trying to do there, but he's given Thorburn all afternoon to clear this one. And remember, the winner of this match meets the All Blacks here on Sunday in the quarterfinal. But at the way these two teams are playing, the All Blacks could probably send a, their C team over here at the moment or send their seven aside team and still probably win the match. Jones to Davis. And the whip is going to have Hadley on. Good play from Mike Harrison. But a little bit of bad luck there as he chipped over the top of Thorburn. Only to see it deflect off the big fullback's shoulder. Good understanding there between Jones and Davis. Jones knew exactly where Davis was. 
Thorburn, in fact, has been penalised for offside. Very vigilant piece of refereeing there by Mr. Urke, who saw Thorburn running across the field after the kick from Davis, even though Thorburn was well away from the kicker at the time, but he charged back into play and was penalised. taken by Robert Jones beautiful play delightful take a couple of meters from the corner flag and then from a very narrow angle a narrow angle he puts the ball 50 meters down the touchline down by Richard Moriarty as the English forwards pour through on top of him Moriarty lays it back there for Jones good play from Bowen good support play from Collins and he split the defense wide open where's the support toe to head by Jones now the race is on the two halfbacks Jones and Harding Jones gets there Let's have a look at it again now there was a little bit of obstruction going on between the two halfbacks when they took the race for the ball but it was very good play there by Collins who was on hand to take that pass to keep the movement going from Bowen he looked as if he was drifting away from the support but he didn't die in the tackle he managed to free the keep the ball the, the movement alive speculated ahead by Jones now I don't know whether we'll see it but the two no we're not going to see it the two halfbacks there was a lot of niggle going on between the two of them when they're running for the ball but it didn't matter in the end, the try was awarded. And the kick as well, and that's a very handy lead that the Welsh have suddenly jumped out to. This is the end of the movement. Uh, the halfback, the Welsh halfback, kicking the ball forward and wins about a 40-metre sprint for the try. Ten points to nil, Wales now lead England and the way England are playing at the moment even three points but looks beyond their capabilities let alone 11 or 10 Webb to Thorburn who claims the fair catch remember as this is a quarter final match we must have a winner from this match so if the scores are tied at the end of 80 minutes 20 minutes of extra play will be staged to find a winner and then if the ties are, the scores are still tied it's a comeback so England's objective at the moment is firstly to score 10 points to stay in this quarter final just going back to that try Brendan uh, it was quite poor defense on behalf of England uh, the Welsh did a simple cross move someone straightening the move up made the first break and there was just no second line of defense there at all so Williams will kick the touch and I wonder what Mr. Orke might have done if the English halfback had got to the ball first because there was almost a case there for a penalty try if Jones hadn't scored the try because he was clearly interfered with by his opposite number when he was running for the ball after he kicked it into the in goal area but he managed to overcome that obstruction and still score the try the referee has apparently changed his mind and decided to call a scrum for something that I Yes, I couldn't follow that either. Couldn't follow. However, the English backs, they must start running with a little more conviction and a little more resolution if they want to get into this match, but they're not. They just seem to be running into their opposing numbers without any real sense of purpose at all.
must be realising now they've got half an hour to salvage something out of this World Cup. I'm sure they'd uh, prefer to go out with a better performance than what they're putting up at the moment. Well, the way they're playing at the moment, they'll be probably happy to go out of the World Cup rather than face the prospect of meeting New Zealand here on Sunday at the way they're playing. Harding. Couldn't even find his skipper. Williams back there from first 5'8". Hadley up on him very quickly. And the ball towed ahead by Jonathan Davis. Far more commitment from these Welsh players. And Davis Wood has twisted his ankle, uh, his knee again, I think. And Williams has been penalised by the referee. And uh, we'll have a look at it again. It was Williams. Who was tackled. And did he release the ball immediately? And the referee obviously believed that he didn't and has penalised him. And the Welsh have elected not to kick for goal. I would have thought that was within the range of uh, Paul Thorburn. But instead they've given it to Davis to kick for touch and it's a very good kick from their fly half, their limping fly half. That must be a very worrisome sight to the Welsh team. He did suffer that knock to his knee in the first spell. And it obviously hasn't come right. Richard Moriarty, the English, the Welsh captain, he must be very pleased with the sight on the scoreboard at the moment. Knocked forward by one of those English forwards in the lineup. And so another good opportunity here for Wales. And I wonder if. Davis from this side of the field will contemplate the drop goals. The sort of country that he would probably want to do so if he gets good ball, but he didn't get any ball at all from there. But with his knee just a little crook at the moment, he might be more inclined to move it on. Nigel Redman. Referee penalising the Welsh forwards there for a bit of elbowing and barging in the line-out. He's looking at Norster and pointing to him and Young. Thorburn decides to take the quick throw into his captain. It went five metres. Played by Bledon Bowen. Gary Reese taking it back into his forwards as they start to roll back towards the halfway. And can the English put something together here? Winterbottom carried on by Dean Richards. No room there for Mike Harrison. The interception, but the Welsh offside. And another penalty to England. Meanwhile, Peter Williams is down with an injury on halfway. Well, I detect a, a, a slight sense of urgency about the Englishman at last, but whether it's going to produce the many points or not, I don't know. And that's where Williams, in fact, did his injury. from the uh, from the English and they uh, were wanting to maintain that pressure inside their 22 but uh, they lost the line out went to a penalty and they're now back on halfway so all that pressure has produced them nothing meanwhile Rob Andrew the emergency fly half for England warming up in anticipation of what might be his appearance in this match but Williams is up on his feet And is going to continue, but he looks as groggy and his knee looks as crook as that of Jonathan Davis, his opposite number. Twelve minutes of play in the second half, and Wales have extended their half-time lead to ten points to nil. 
And another good touch there from the Welsh halfback Robert Jones. He's having a good game for his Welsh side this afternoon. Dooley from the line out. Winterbottom. Harding trying to find his skipper Mike Harrison, but he's heavily marked. He's done the wise thing. He's come back now. He's straightening it up, up towards the 22. But knocked forward. I'm just amazed that Harding continues to go the short side. I mean, they've been winning good second phase ball there. He had four men on his left and one on his right with the possibility of an overlap, and he continues to come back the short side. The scrum in midfield, just out from the Welsh 22. And Davis driving the English back, but he once again he hasn't found touch. He's committed that fault a few times this afternoon. Has Jonathan Davis? His player has just gone off the boil a bit since he suffered that knock to his knee, and it seems to have worsened a little in the second half. Martin Green. He must be a very frustrated man at the moment watching this indifferent performance by his English side. Wales leading the line outs 14 to 8. Well, that was to be expected, of course, with uh, Bob Norster, probably the best line out jumper in Europe in the Welsh side this afternoon. England aren't winning much from the lineouts, but they are winning it from these uh, second phases. And Harrison is getting a bit more work in the second spell with this persistence of Harding to work the short side with his captain, Mike Harrison. But he had a couple of opportunities in the first half, Harrison, and he, his hands let him down, and he's been heavily marked in the second spell. Another knock on and yet another scrum. Well, in the match back in March in Cardiff, which apart from being a rather violent affair, was also an enormously tedious game of rugby, there were 36 penalties and only 13 minutes and 58 seconds of actual play. Well, I think this match is probably even worse as a spectacle in that game, which was dubbed the most boring international of the 1980s. And this, I think, would be in contention for the silver medal at the moment. As Mr. Urke gives yet another penalty, there's some pushing there by the Welsh forwards. And Williams from midway between 22 and halfway in his own half. It's 36 penalties back in March in this match and 15 so far. Fifteen minutes of the match in the second half of this quarter-final and Wales ahead by ten points to nil. And Harding, who might be penalised for that, uh, in terms of territory anyway, for that very silly pass of his. But in actual fact, the breaks went English way because a lovely kick there from Harrison. But Welsh, short line out. Still OK. Not happy with the throw-in. I don't think it travelled five metres. And so the scrum to go down. The English line. It looks as if they were going to be in all sorts of trouble as they are going backwards from it. But nicely tidied up by Harrison and now a chance for England to put their first try on the board. And here he goes with another wild pass. It's a slightly better directed. Webb. Well, I thought Jonathan Webb had ghosted his way through that gap there. And he, as he ran off from Michael Harrison and then couldn't free his pass back to him. It's the first bit of initiative we've seen from the, from the English backs. 
the halfback Harding throwing that extremely long pass to fullback Webb who was standing outside the outside centre and he almost sliced his way through. England they need a big scrum here that's a good strike by Wales Harding they're trying to catch him offside controlled the back there by Paul Moriarty and nicely cleared by the Welsh and Richard Jones exhorting his players to keep this effort up for another 22 minutes if they can do that they've played themselves into the semi-finals of the World Cup England now reverting to the short line out Dooley and Redmond they're two locks the minimum number that you must have in a short line out and the face of Martin Green tells it all despair etched from top to bottom and who could blame him Yes, with the amount of unforced errors that the English have committed today, I don't think they deserve to win this test match. Not straight. Free kick to England. And what will they do here? Will they drop for goal or put it in the air? But after the last effort from uh, Williams, I think they'd be better off putting it in the air. But oh, what a shocking kick from Harding. His mind must surely be elsewhere. One thing that amazes me, Brendan, it was a free kick. He only had to keep the ball in the air. That's what he wanted to do. But players continually want to tap the ball first. It's just a pointless exercise. Tidied up by Jonathan Davies. And a chance here now for England. Toad ahead by Reese, but no, the referee has brought them back for that uh, knock forward from the attempted intercept. Midway through the second spell in this quarter final here at the Ballymore Ground in Brisbane, Wales are hit by 10 points to nil. And another free kick, and once again, it's a against Robert Jones the second scrum in a row that he's put the ball in crookedly and coming away with it quickly as though there's Rory Underwood Harding as well and they nearly caught the Welsh defence napping there Harding trying to redeem himself taking a quick tap and he almost got away with it so a very critical phase of this match now if the Welsh can weather this English storm they probably will have wrapped this match up. And they know that if they're going to get back in this match, they must score. They've been camped inside the Welsh 22 for the last five or ten minutes. But they've got nothing to show for it yet. Davis, again, has failed to find touch. Underwood, he nearly lost it. Underwood, he's just not running with any conviction at all. Toad ahead by Hadley. Good play from Jonathan Webb. And the English receive another penalty. Almost on halfway. And Harrison is coming in to try and do something himself. It gives the ball to Williams and they're going to kick by the look of it, the touch. Well, there was a couple of opportunities there for England in the last 10 minutes, and they fritted them away. So now they must start again. I don't think too many of the All Blacks would have bothered to turn the second half on, Brendan. Oh, and you could hardly blame them for that. Collins, Richard Moriarty, smuggled off him from Nigel Redman. And Redman penalised.
And if history is any yardstick to go by, the chances of England scoring a try in this match are not very good. Salmon, Sims, kicking across for Mike Harrison. Toad ahead nicely from Harrison. Davies, Davis is back there. And he receives a penalty for a head-high tackle from uh, Mike Harrison on Jonathan Davis. Dangerous tackle as he tried to clear the ball. You'll see it again here. It was toed ahead nicely there from Harrison. And as Davis went in to clear it, round under the chin went Mike Harrison. And rightly so, he's been penalised. Harrison again. Webb. Oh, shocking pass. Probably only went about five metres forward. And English fans hanging their head in despair. And who can blame them? But as I was about to say, England haven't scored a try against Wales for two and a half internationals. They didn't score one earlier this year. They didn't score any last year when they won by 21 to 18, when it was all penalties. And they, of course, haven't scored one today. And the touch judge, Mr. Fleming, across the far side of the field, had his flag up for an infringement that he had spotted and which he has indicated to Mr. Urkay. I don't think that was thrown in properly and so we'll have the scrum 15 metres in from touch. going off the back of the scrum smuggled away from him by Harding out as far as Harrison on the 10 metre line he's going to have his opposite number on Davis on his own 10 metre line. Good positional play here by Webb as he anticipated that kick well. Underwood and Webb worked the one two rather nicely. So, yet another line out. Midway 22 and halfway. Wales still ahead by 10 points to nil. Only one try in the second half and only two tries in the match. Welsh led by 6 to nil at the break. Dean Richards, first to the loose ball for England. I imagine he's gone through a few packets of chewing gum this afternoon. He almost looks in a trance because Martin Green, the English coach, wondering if his team can pull anything out of the fire in the last 15 minutes. I don't think he was watching the game. Underwood, that's a tricky one. And the Welsh, for the first time really in the second spell, apart from the time they scored that try, right down on the English line. I think Robert Jones can hold his head high. He's, uh, he's played very well for Wales, and as he did against uh, Tonga in uh, one of the earlier games. He's made the uh, job of the Welsh forwards a lot easier. The long throw to Gareth Roberts, looking there for his second try. There goes Roberts, he still has the ball, a metre short. So the English will need a very good scrum here on their own line if they wish to clear this without any bother. It doesn't look like it's a bad scrum either. Harding. And what does Williams trying to do there? And the Welsh looks as if they were caught offside or been penalised. And England received a defensive penalty. Or was it interference perhaps on Williams after he'd kicked the ball? I 
I was talking about the inability of England to score tries against England. If we look at the last 12 matches between these two countries, the Englishmen have only scored four tries in the last 12 matches between them and none in the last three. And only four times in the last 25 years have England managed to beat Wales. And they're up against it this afternoon, down by 10 points to nil with about 17 minutes of the match remaining. So Hunt from inside the world path is Williams and he's going to kick for touch again. 20 penalties in the match so far. And yet oddly not one of them has been converted into points. Along the back line to Sims. Couldn't find Underwood who'd come in from the left wing. Picked up by Jamie Salmon. Finds Redman a few metres out from the Welsh 22 in midfield. Richards, as far as Underwood, he's going to have his opposite man on, but can't get away from Yeah and Evans. And still these penalties come for pushing and charging near the player after he'd released the ball, and England have, have been penalised, and a defensive penalty to Wales inside their own 22. There was some barging and pushing there after the player had been tackled. For that interference, Wales received a penalty. Two of their players are injured. A nice move here from the, from the English. Halfback putting Underwood away. Not really aware of where his support was coming from, and I think uh, Welsh halfback Jones. Stomping for his trouble. Well, Jones is going to take his place on the field of play despite that injury as the Welsh push the English back towards halfway. And mercifully, there is now just less than 15 minutes of this match remaining. And I'm sure for everybody including most of the players that can't come quick enough. Devro, Hadley, and Chips Harrison, nicely taken by Webb. But the cover defence pick him up. Nicely won, however, by the English forwards for their backs. Sims to Salmon, to Rory Underwood. Gets away from Yayan Evans, Davis. Underwood is there as well. He's obviously getting concerned about this English side. He's come in from the right wing to try and keep the momentum going. And some interference on those English players res results in another penalty to England. That needless head-high tackle resulted in the penalty. Underwood. Underwood inside to Harrison. I think he's backing up on the inside. And Moriarty. A little bit high. <laughs> Coming off the field by the look of it is the big man Bob Norster, the lock forward, who has been the dominant man in these lineouts today. Been replaced by Richards. And Mr. 
Mr. Okay just indicating that uh, before Richards can join the field, the, ref the doctor must in fact make sure that Norster can't take any further part in this match. So there's just this little discussion going on on the touchline. So the Welsh continue with 14 men. Webb, but no way through the gap. The Welsh know now that they've got the winning of this match with full time less than 10 minutes away. And a pretty stiff tackle there on Harding, which I think might have resulted in a penalty, was it? And here's a chance for England to put their first points on the board from right out in front on the 22. But I wonder whether they might go for the six points. And that I think is probably Harding that's laid out there. It's Harrison. Uh, I thought the tackle was quite fair. Well, it certainly was low. There was nothing high about it at all. But it was a pretty tough one nonetheless on Harrison, and he took the full brunt of it. And I think he might have just lost his breath. So Hugh Richards, prop forward, has come on to replace Bob Norster. And Richards... Watching Harrison receive attention before he can take his place in this match. Mike Harrison looks as like if he's a little winded. But he's going to stay on the field anyway. So Hugh Richards about to get his first taste of World Cup rugby. And the first thing he'll do on the field of play is watch Jonathan Webb kick for goal. Well, I may have... Would have, would have thought the Englishman might have gone for the six points there, but I suppose if they can land this penalty, it might give them some heart, but they will still need to score twice. Third shot at goal today for Jonathan Webb. And so at last the English supporters have something to cheer about. It's not much and it might have come just a little too late with only seven minutes of play remaining. But England at last on the board, ten points to three. Strange decision that, Brennan. Uh, as you said, uh, even with that penalty goal, England need to score twice. Don't see any point in just getting points on the board for the sake of them. They really had to try and score a try in that position. It was an ideal platform too to launch themselves at the Welsh line because it was in midfield right on the 22. But they elected to kick for goal, so they've at least got three points from it. And Webb, the man who kicked the penalty, brings play back to halfway. Again, in that situation, uh, they had room to move that ball inside their 22, seven points down. He elected to kick the touch. Well, you saw the grim faces of the England coach and the reserves, including Steve Bainbridge there beneath him, and it looked as if they were on their way to a funeral, which in a sense, I suppose, is what is about to happen here for England because it's the death of their World Cup hopes if they can't score at least seven points in the next seven minutes. If they can do that, well, their hopes will remain alive in as much that there'll be 20 minutes of extra play. So their target here is to score seven points in seven minutes. But against their old foe, the Welshman, that could be pretty difficult. And Richards is quickly into the fray. Richards and Richards, in fact. Dean Richards and Hugh Richards. And Mr. Orke very quickly to snap out that little fracas that was about to blow up on the fringes of that rock. And another free kick against... I think it was the Welsh front row this time and some back chat from the Welsh forwards. The quick tap penalty taken by Harding. Moore puts it on the ground for his halfback. Now it's back to Williams. Kicking in behind those Welsh backs and bringing him back inside the Welsh 22. 
reminder that the Television New Zealand Network News will follow very soon after the conclusion of this rugby match. And yet another stoppage for injury. Well, I can't help think that it might be a bad idea if the administrators of this code took a leaf out of the example set by soccer last year at the World Cup where whenever there was an injury break the players were taken to the sideline and play continued it does seem to be absurd that 29 players should stand around and to twiddle their thumbs every time a player wants a sponge or a bit of water on a knock but that's what happens here in rugby of course they are only allowed a minute of injury time before play must continue but it always seems such an interminably long time every time we have a stoppage last Alan Phillips can get this line out underway inside the Welsh 22 another chance for England what can they do in the last four minutes of this match to look at the way the rather lethargic way the English forwards are gathering for this line out you could almost feel that they've given it away and Chilcock it's Reese that frees it eventually to Williams there's not much he can do with a pass like that Salmon trying to straighten the movement up for England Harding Collins the first man there for Wales Another penalty to Wales. Should, should Harding had a word to the referee there? He is retiring. I don't know what it was about, but perhaps seeking some explanation for what the penalty was for. We couldn't tell from here. And Thorburn hasn't found touch. Underwood, Webb in the midfield. Harrison. Harrison. He's an elusive character, this Mike Harrison. It's pretty quick too for a winger at the age of 31, an age when most wingers have hung up their boots from international rugby. Thankfully, just three minutes remaining in this rather tedious quarterfinal here. At Ballymore between Wales and England is still the penalties flow from the whistle of Mr. Orkay as he points the finger at Gareth Roberts. Reese. The English forwards penalised for coming in ahead of the ball into that ruck. And this penalty count must be getting up pretty close to the 30 mark, which almost as bad as the 36, as I mentioned were dished out in the match between these two countries three months ago at Cardiff. I don't think there's any doubt about it. This will rate as the worst game of rugby we've seen in the World Cup so far. The young man David Jones carrying the wounds of his battle this afternoon in the front of the Welsh lineout and his first cap for Wales. Webb. Underwood. Referee coming back for that first infringement for the ball that was thrown forward. There was no advantage. Just looking at the, the two teams coming across now, Brennan, <laughs> to this scrum, uh, especially the English pack. I mean, when you see international teams who really want to win, you see a bit more enthusiasm put into their play than what we're seeing here today. No, I have. I'm pretty certain they gave this match away a short time ago because there's no heart there at all in their football at the moment. They're just going through the motions. And the final word goes to John Devro. And that sealed the fate of the Englishman. The interception and the try. And it really was symptomatic of the inertia which had descended upon this English team. They didn't even move just threw the ball willy-nilly and it was a very simple interception 
You'll never get an easier one than that. And Wales are now safely through to the semi-finals. John Devro, and this is how he did it. Just look at that. The pass nowhere near the man who was waiting to receive it. And Devro, a clean pair of heels. And he knows that that has sealed the fate of the old rival this afternoon. And to put a little icing on the cake and another nail on the English coffin, Thorburn makes it 16 points to three. And that's it here at Ballymore. So the real excitement in the match coming in the last 30 seconds, literally, with that interception from John Devro sending Wales safely through to the semi-finals. And the referee has blown his whistle to mercifully release us all from this tedious 80 minutes of rugby here at Ballymore this afternoon. Two very poor teams having an off day, but in the end, the Welsh deserved to win, and they did so by 16 points to three. It was hardly worth holding up the network news for, really. 16 points to three Wales now to play the All Blacks at uh, Ballymore in Brisbane this Sunday. Highlights, if we can find it.